Shwe Shwe, the Mountain King is a documentary about a king who brought together refugees from different parts of southern Africa and welded them into the mightiest African state south of the Zambezi. This is according to the makers of the film that will be released uh, on shelves and possibly also uh, broadcast as well. Here to talk to us about the documentary is Kolosi Ramakula, who produced the film, and uh, he's in studio with me. Welcome. Good Thank to have you very much. Live. Good to be here too. Good. So <laughs> you, you, you tell me that, look, before we get into the actual story, wasn't the easiest documentary to put together, or the film to put together, difficult terrain to travel through? Yes. Uh, it's taken 15 years. 15 years. 15 years. Wow. Uh, wow. Most of the people who are there, we had to meet the authorities, folk historians, academicians. We have Professor Bernard, uh, Chief Mahone Masopa. It's, it's a mix of, of, of people from different backgrounds. Yeah. And uh, yes, it has taken quite, quite some time, really, because anyway, it was a personal project at one time. Yes. You know, you shoot and you have money, then you put it down and go and look for money. Uh, I can imagine. <laughs> money, money always at the center of it all. Thing, yeah. Let's talk about the story of Mishmesha. It's been told many, many times. Now, what's different about the telling of this, this version of events? Well, we, 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 our approach is Africa's secret revealed. Because the greatest story is, look, every nation has a great story. Yeah. Definitely, there are many heroes in Southern Africa. But here is a guy in Southern Africa who started with nothing and made a nation. But this nation, as what makes the difference in telling the story is that we are not taking from, like I could have written a script from A to Z. But we have gone out throughout Southern Africa. We have gone to France. We have gone to the UK to research Kimushosha thoroughly. Because in the UK there would be a general Kafkas because the British were involved in, 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 in Lesotho. And we, we have met, met the Africana historians also because then you'd find that he had relations with the Africana because the Free State actually uh, was formed adjacent to Lesotho. Yeah. So the difference is that these people talk. We're not telling uh, people's story ourselves. We are having people tell their story. The Africana speaks for the Africana. The French speak for their missionaries. Mm. The British speak for, for the British role down here. And the Basudi speak for the Basudi. We even have uh, Professor Pitigantuli. Mm. He speaks about the Zulu. Like there's an era that is called the, the, the Fakane. I think that is the major difference. People are getting it from the horse's mouth. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine, okay, we, we, we spoke about some of the monetary difficulties that you went through. I mean, 15 years of putting this movie together. Putting that aside, um, what, were, what were some of the other issues that, that, that were quite difficult for you? Because, I mean, you were delving into history, and I imagine, you know, to try and find out the facts and, and get to the right people. Couldn't have been the easiest thing to do. I, 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 how, how was that for you? It, it, was, it, was, it, was, it has been a long, tough journey. Yeah. Uh, I, I came into Kim Mushu, even being a Mosutu still, I was, I was, at first I didn't have the interest that I have today on Kim Mushu issue. Yeah. But what happened is that I'm a writer. I've, uh, I've been here in, 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 in South Africa f uh, for 15 years. I've been in Johannesburg for 15 years. I'm a script writer for television. So I was doing some work for, for SABC through your Haynes Films, your Philo Peters Productions, and I published with the SABC. But come 1994, 93, we started putting our companies together, and then I needed a subject that would be different from other subjects. So I submitted my material to SABC yeah. for possible docudrama production. Yeah. Well, that's about 15 years, 16 <laughs> years ago, and every other year I'm, I still submit the docudrama. Yeah. But okay, fine. We up to now we have not yet, but I'm hoping this year it, it will probably it will probably yeah. happen. The most difficult thing about producing a documentary uh, film that has a story that has not been told many times is that you find people with different views. Yeah, you find people. Uh, everybody likes to talk nicely about their people. Hmm? You know what I mean? Then you have to kind of sieve, and then you get people who are realistic, who just tell the story as it is. Yes. And look, this is there's more than 800 uh, 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 minutes of, 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 of footage that you had to go through and then put story that actually comes together. Nice. So yeah, it was tough uh, because some of them are even bigger authorities than yourself, you yeah. know, and you think you want to challenge them, but, but it's they not, know it's more. Not, it's they not know more. Did you yes. find out anything surprising? I mean, was there anything that you you discovered about King Mishweshwe that that you'd never known before? That kind of almost took you by surprise. Yes, in fact, when when I started doing this docudrama proposal for SABC, what happened was that then I started researching King Mishweshwe. 
Binyam Sutu, everybody thinks they know their history. Yeah. But I discovered there and then that I did not know anything about Kim Mushesh. Kim Mushesh was a warrior. He was a general. Kim Mushesh was a statesman of, of excellence. That people like even uh, President Paul Krug have, talk, have talked about him in their own diaries. That they, they compared him to Napoleon. They said he's a Napoleon of Africa. Yeah. He's somebody who has defeated the British in two wars in Southern Africa, 1851, 1852. And the generals that he defeated, the General Cathcart, for example, had respect for him. He said, look, this guy is, 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 is well learned in the art of military science in the conventional way. And they were surprised because he was considered a savage. But the way he laid out his forces and the way he outmaneuvered the, uh, the, the generals, yeah. you know what I mean, who came from the advanced Europe, you know. So I didn't know about these things. I didn't know that the political engagement that he had with, 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 with First, the, the African kings, other African kings, uh, the political setup of Lesotho. Lesotho was a rich country. In, in fact, let me put it this way. The country that is called Lesotho today actually yeah. is not a country in the scientific settlement sense. Oh. Lesotho is a monument of success against colonialism. This guy ran a state that was never colonized. Is the only country, okay, with Ethiopia, that were never colonized in a military way. In fact, Lesotho was annexed to Britain in the war of 1868 with the with the Africana. And this was caused by the fact that he was able to maneuver militarily and he knew how far to go because, look, he could not fight the British forever because the British would have an army that is even bigger oh, than his whole nation. Yeah, you know what I mean? This is the truth. Exactly. So he knew that he would fight them up to here and then he would sue for peace. He would write letters saying, you know, politically making sense letters to the British. So the British said, okay, right, no, we won't pursue war. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He has fought in three major wars with the Africana, the last one in 1868. And on, at, on all occasions, he has had dealings with the presidents of the free state, you know, and they had had agreements. Some of the wars were stopped midway because of his art in, in negotiation. You know, he was, that's why he was called the peacemaker. Yeah. You see, he would always say, I can fight if I have to fight, but fighting does not advance us uh, go economically. If we look at the Lesotho today, because obviously you, you, you spent a lot of time there, um, d do you think it is what King Mishwesha dreamt that it would be? It's a shame, actually. Not I think Lesotho is the direct opposite of what Mushoshua actually tried to establish. I, he established a mighty state that never begged for food from anybody. In fact, Lesotho was, was supplying even Kimberley with wheat, you know, with meat. You know, in spite of the fact that wheat was a new seed in Lesotho, you know. The friend of the free state of the, the 1800s referred to the Basotho, that nation, as the naturally most industrious nation this side. And because it, was, it is a microcosm of South African nationalities, in Lesotho, in Lesotho you will find all people that are represented in South Africa, they are in Lesotho, the Anguni is in Lesotho. Yeah. You see, there are Tsonas in Lesotho. They are, everybody is there. So he was able to make these people, all of them, think as one person, as a productive people, and use their different experiences to make a mighty uh, state. So the, today's Lesotho, which is copying everything from everybody, yeah. that believes that they, can learn, they have to learn everything from, from, from everybody. People, Mushesha hated arguing at court. He said people must talk for country first, not because we have differences in personalities. But my country now, it's, it's clogged with personality differences. Politicians are arguing, and it has become a really very poor country, which I think we look at it and he thinks, what a waste. What did I do? <laughs> what went wrong? Yeah. I, I, it's mm -hmm. such an interesting discussion. I have to wrap it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But just quickly, um, where will this documentary be screened? Uh, well, we have submitted the document to the SABC. Okay. It's being evaluated. Good. Of good. course, SABC, we have a sentiment for SABC, especially SABC 2. Yeah. Because uh, we think the target audience, the, the Basutu, most of them are there, but it's not for the Basutu only. Uh, and only after that we are going to approach other television stations, but we thought because, okay, I've been working with uh, SABC for a long time and yeah. it becomes a natural place. First for part of to, call, to be yes. Yeah. All right. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for joining us, mm -hmm. and uh, good luck. Let's hope that it'll be on screens uh, soon. But if you'd like to go and have a look at the website, www.mushweshwethefirst.co.ls. All right, that's .co.ls. Mushweshwethefirst. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for joening us. Well thank done. Thank you very good much. Good work. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. About uh, this documentary that he's put together.